you, John. Thank you, Mark. Why a three-pole technique for a left colectomy? Well, the same question can be made for, uh, for a laparoscopic colectomy, for single port colectomy, and uh, for transcenal TME, for instance. So uh, there is, there is a, only one rational to, to improve the minimally invasive surgery uh, to reduce surgical trauma if we can, uh, but especially to avoid fighting in the working camera, to use gravity instead of uh, exposing grasp, graspers, and uh, to, to change triangulation as we know uh, since now. Uh, why only three again? I try to, to explain. Uh, from an oncological point of view, I think that it's very important to avoid any manipulation on the mesentery of our uh, oncologic colon uh, in order to, to avoid any squeezing of lymph nodes inside. And you know the lymph nodes are are very important for, for T, TNM, but especially to avoid any recurrence in the peritoneal cavity. And second, uh, using gravity, we, ca we can reduce the number of port, of, of course, because usually we, we have to use two, two forceps to expose our anatomical details. And uh, finally, we have all the instruments of our, under our control. Uh, we don't fight uh, with our instruments, and uh, we can avoid what uh, uh, Dr. Ambrosetti called the dance of instruments inside the abdominal cavity. Uh, we can avoid all, all of uh, these uh, uh, unuseful steps. It is cost effective. Uh, of course, it is cost effective. We use only three port, like in uh, open surgery. In open surgery, we have uh, our head in uh, in the middle and one uh, right hand and one left hand, so we can reproduce the same uh, the same technique laparoscopically. And uh, this is the, the last question. If uh, we can use, if we use more trocar, we, we can teach. I don't think so. I, I think that uh, we can teach when we, when we are outside the, the table and uh, the resident can, can work alone under our control. And uh, you know, uh, the last part of these uh, slides is uh, uh, probably the, the best. Uh, whatever it happens, it is uh, resident fault. So I think that uh, this is not a reason to use more trucker. Uh, the energy forceps probably is the key of this kind of surgery because uh, with one forceps we can grasp, we can expose, we can coagulate and we can cut without any changing in, uh, in our surgical field. And we have the tip of our forceps all the time under control. Um, just to, to take a look on, on my, my personal technique, which is uh, not my personal, but uh, we call uh, Usher and, uh, and Mark's technique, because we start uh, 1994 with this technique. Oh, and anyway, you can see we have uh, a, an isosceles triangle, which is very, very easy to, to put inside and uh, to control. And uh, uh, the original technique is as uh, you can see gastrocolic division at Boucher area, uh, Wangesen ligament division, 
IMV division, of course, at Rogi quadrilateral, IMA division at Bacon axilla, a medial to lateral dissection between gerotas and told fascia, mesorectum division at Mondor hilum, transaction and resection through a mini laparotomy, Ned Griffin technique at mesentery closure. Why so many names? Because uh, the tricks of this technique is to know very well every anatomical details we have to uh, dissect free. Uh, this is, as we started this technique, we open the gastrocolic ligament and immediately the lesser sac is open and the pancreatic tail is under our control. So you can divide the transverse colon mesentery about one centimeter or two centimeters far away from the pancreatic tail. This is the best way to find easily, without any risk, uh, gerotas fascia behind the told fascia, close to the pancreatic tail hand. This is uh, uh, the original technique. And uh, this is the, the major trick to, to start this, uh, this three-pore technique, to know this translucent area, which is very well described in 1955 by Professor Boucher, already working in uh, Lyon University, who described this area, which is very easy to open and uh, is the safest way to enter the lesser sac. Uh, going on, uh, the second trick is to divide what we call the killer ligament or the uh, Morgenstern or the Wagzen uh, ligament, which is a ligament uh, between colon and uh, spleen. So if we divide immediately this uh, ligament, we can avoid any damage of the spleen. But if we want to, to use another technique, a medial to lateral, uh, what we call the Joël Leroy technique, we can open a window in the transverse colon mesentery. As you can see, we don't need any other forceps. The left hands lift up the transverse colon mesentery and the very wide window is open in the lesser sac and we can see the pancreatic tail in front of us. After that, uh, we, we dissect free the IMV very close to the confluence in the splenic vein. We clip it and we divide it. This is, we, we do uh, with a three port, four port, five port, six port but it is the same technique, and as you can see in the field, we don't have any instruments uh, dancing all over. And after dividing uh, the, uh, the transverse colon mesentery, uh, oh, sorry. Can you go back, please? Oh, no, no, okay, thank you. Uh, after dividing uh, the, the IMV, we can lift up by the left hands the mesentery and we have the pancreas in front of us. And, uh, and we can detach the transverse colon mesentery very deep, very, very deep without needing any forceps, as you can see, using a forceps to create a triangle in the field, uh, lifting up the mesentery and exposing the pancreas and uh, the transverse colon mesentery and the gastrocolic ligament on the top. The pancreatic tail and the splenic artery is, is very well visible in the field. So we can do both technique, medial to lateral or starting from the gastrocolic ligament. 
so this is the field that we can achieve by uh, two ports with one forceps, one grasping forceps, and one energy forceps. And we go on. Uh, we need, of course, some anatomical details. And uh, the most important one, in my opinion, in, is to recognize the supra-mesocolic fascia and the soto-mesocolic fascia. Lifting up, of course, these two fascias all together and uh, dissecting uh, the pancreatic tail with, a, with a, an energy forceps very deep in order to achieve a, a nice uh, splenic flexure taken down. So uh, both technique can be, can be done. Coming back to the, to the first technique, after opening the gastrocolic ligament, we have to go to the, to the splenic vein. We have to recognize the splenic vein very, very high um, in, at the confluence in the splenic vein, but we have to recognize as well the confluence, the confluence of the splenic, the, of the left colic vein going into the IMV. I try to show all the vascular uh, um, details in a left uh, colectomy in, in, a, in, in an easy case. Uh, where we have to cut the splenic vein? Exactly in the Roger area, described many and many years ago, as you can see. Surgery is not a new technique. And uh, this uh, uh, quadrilateral described by Roger is done by splenic vein, superior mesenteric vein, uh, uh, inferior mesenteric vein, and, and of course, gastro uh, epiploic vein. But we have to remember even another anatomical details, which is the trites arcade. The trites arcade is this left colic vein going down into the IMV and uh, uh, showing us where we have to cut the splenic vein without any, uh, any damage of the arcade, of the uh, uh, vascular arcade. So we can go on. And we can go to the IMA. IMA is is a um, is the most important artery for left colectomy. Of course, we have to ligate very high as well. What we call the high ligation, and the high ligation was described by a very famous American surgeon in 1955. The name is Bacon. And um, the origin of IMA we have to dissect free is the Bacon axilla. Bacon was a, a surgeon of the Temple University who described first the high ligation of, uh, of IMA. But even in difficult case where we have to spare the left colic artery, we can do the, this technique, a very simple, uh, three port technique, dissecting three, the origin of uh, left colic, as you can see, and very soon the origin of the first sigmoid artery. So using all the time this technique, you can, you can do a, a ligation below the origin of uh, left colic artery. In this case, left colic artery is a huge one, and it's a good idea to, to spare it. Just to show you that uh, with, the, uh, with this uh, three-port technique, is able to do any kind of surgery and any kind of uh, uh, vascular preservation. With the left hands, you lift up the uh, sigmoid colon mesentery, and you expose the anatomical detail 
you have to dissect free. And uh, this is the, the Bacon, Professor Bacon, a very famous surgeon in Temple University who described this uh, uh, Bacon axilla. And it's very important to remember what we described to lift up the artery, to open the angle between uh, IMA and the aorta, and to cut the aorta very close. And this is another very important uh, anatomical detail, which is the Gruber ligament, or the Gruber fold. In order to lift up the IMA, we can lift up the mesentery of the uh, sigmoid colon, and the sigmoid colon mesentery was described by Gruber uh, about 200 uh, years ago. Uh, so lifting up this, uh, this fold, we can expose nicely the origin of IMA. But before doing that, we find very often some adhesion between left colon and uh, the abdominal wall. And this uh, adhesion was very well described by UNESCO and uh, it is called UNESCO resex. Is the other side, the external side of the Gruber ligament. It's very, very important to dissect free the sigmoid colon in order to lift up the mesentery and to open the angle between IMA and aorta. And then we have to dissect free the left colon in, in, uh, in the same way you, you do in, uh, in three or four pore technique. We, we try to find the embryological plane between Gerota's fascia and told fascia. And this can be done safely and easily with two forceps. As you can see, we create the same triangle you have seen before. We lift up the mesentery, we pull down with uh, the forceps, with the second forceps, uh, the gerotas fascia, and we can see the white line that uh, tell us that we are in the right plane, in the embryological plane. And the embryo embryological plane is very well seen when you don't have any oozing and any bleeding because it is an avascular plane. You go deep, you don't need any other forceps. You go gently and uh, you pull up with one forceps, you pull down with the second one, and finally you can reach the posterior aspect of the colon very deep in the field. So the, the only uh, tricks we have to know is this one. The right plane you have to find and you have to, to take, uh, well described by Tolt and Gerotas. And they described in this drawing many and many years ago where we have to go to do an avascular, uh, an, uh, an avascular uh, colectomy. And finally, we, we have to cut the bowel at the junction. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have to pull up the junction with one forceps, and we have to put in the right position the, the linear stapler. And which is the right position? The right position is in front of the Valdair fascia, and especially below the Mondor hilum. The Mondor hilum is the bifurcation of superior mesenteric, uh, uh, superior rectal artery, uh, dividing in right and left superior rectal artery. This is very important to be sure that we are in the right position to do our safe anastomosis between colon and upper rectum. I want to, to show you the, the Valdair with his book describing the fascia covering the uh, nerves, the hypogastrium nerves, which is so important, especially in male. And uh, 
I want to show you uh, the second tricks, which is this uh, very well-known surgeon in France, which was, uh, which was uh, uh, the first describing uh, where we have to cut to, to do a safe uh, colorectal anastomosis. And uh, going on, this is uh, 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 how, to, how we can um, remove the specimen. We, we, we open a mini laparotomy in uh, one of the three port in the right iliac fossa port. And uh, we do the anastomosis. Uh, this is probably the most difficult step doing three port because we have to to create the anastomosis properly, putting uh, the shaft in the middle of the uh, staple line and to put the anvil in a good position. But anyway, uh, this is uh, the knife griffin that you can know uh, much better than me. And you can do with many ports, but as you can see, you can do a proper anastomosis with uh, one forceps exposing you the colorectal anastomosis. And uh, uh, at the end of the operation, we need to, to recreate uh, the, the abdominal cavity closure because we, we need to close the mesentery. And again, we can do that uh, with a three-pore technique. I want to show you how we can do that. Um, we don't need any stitch. Probably uh, the best way is uh, this one. And it is to, to close the mesentery with a cyanoacrylate glue. It's a glue. Uh, that you can put in the right position so you can cover all the, the mesentery and you close uh, the mesentery in order to avoid any, any internal hernia that which is all the time possible after a left colectomy. And so putting some glue, it's very, very easy to avoid any, any uh, internal hernia. But uh, we have to speak even for, uh, we have to speak even about uh, uh, transcenal TME. Is it possible to do a transcenal TME with a three pore technique? Uh, I don't know if it is possible I do that, but I change um, this technique. Uh, and I want to, to show you what I do. I do the transcenal step first, and I create only a small channel between denonvier fascia and mesorectal fascia. Then I push my CO2 in the abdominal cavity, and the CO2 run up uh, just in the embryological plane, uh, dissecting free IMA, IMV, and uh, creating a space between gerotas and tall fascia. And so pneumodissection help us to do a, a proper uh, transcenal TME uh, without uh, many pores inside. Uh, I tried to show you at the end uh, just a small uh, clip about uh, this technique. This is the small uh, window we create in the anterior aspect of the rectal wall. As you can see, the window is very, very small. It's like a tunnel between mesorectal fascia and tall fascia. The CO2 helps the surgeon, as you can see, going up gently without any oozing and any bleeding. And we go very deep in order to discover the middle part of the vesicles and uh, of the denonvier fascia uh, covering the, this is the, the, the prostate and the vesicle. As you can see, 
I tried to show you the De non vie fascia completely preserved without any, any damage. And uh, now the gas is observed by the second team coming up. The bubble is coming up. You can, uh, you can see the, the scope of the first team working uh, transcendently. And as you can see, the bubble is running up uh, close to the IMA and close to the IMV. And uh, just to show you that uh, it is very easy with, again, with a three pore technique or with a single pore technique to open the peritoneal sheet. This is the, the Gruber folds. The gas uh, come out in the abdominal cavity so you can recognize the iliac vessels and you can go gently to dissect the right plane very well exposed by the bubbles. In, in a minute, you, you can see the IMA origin completely naked because of the gas penetrating in the, in the right plane. And then, in order to avoid any damage of the nerves, I like to do dissection of the nerves of the branches uh, climbing, climbing up uh, to the, mesent to the uh, inferior mesenteric artery with, uh, with the CUSA system and cutting with a cold blade in order to avoid any, any burns of the nerves, of the hypogastric nerves. So, as you can see, the IMA is naked, completely naked. We can cut it and... Uh, it's finished. And uh, in a few minutes, we, we are ready to, to create the space with a swab because uh, the gas has dissected free the space between gerotas and tall fascia. You push a four by four inside and the dissection is already done. And uh, now we are ready to, to dissect free the IMV. And IMV is in front of you. You have to lift up with, uh, with uh, one left hand. And uh, here it is. We preserve the trites arcade. And uh, as you can see, the, uh, the mesenteric vein is ready. OK, uh, just to, to try to convince you that uh, you can do a, a proper colectomy with four port, with uh, six port, with uh, five port, but even, even with a three port technique, we can achieve a good oncological resection. Thank you for your attention.